Ireland has long had a proud tradition of producing world-class fighters and now it seems we may well be seeing the emergence of a new superstar and this time it's even better as he's from Donegal. Oh, we're never going to hear the end of it. <laughs> the North American Boxing Federation middleweight champion Mr Jason Quigley last Saturday made waves in his big comeback fight in Massachusetts where he knocked out Puerto Rican Daniel Rosario. Have a look at this. Mexican style, you would say. And nice double left hook combination from Quigley. Oh, and there it is. Good the left hook to the body. Four, five. Quigley just got caught at the end because both guys' hands are down and they're tired. And so both. Oh, left hook once again. And down goes Rosario. I've seen this before, Bernard. He's not getting up. You see the left hook right there. That was a perfect punch. Jason, brilliant stuff. Congratulations again. <laughs> Thanks enjoyed very much. watching Congratulations that. Congratulations indeed. Very nice. yeah. uh, just, just on that, right, you're a year out. You broke your hand a year ago. Do you come back and kind of go, I hope I can still do this? Yeah, well, like, obviously, my preparation had me 110% confident in moving into that fight and getting a good victory. But, of course, I'm human at the end of the day. Mm. And uh, coming back from a, a serious injury and over a year out, there was obviously a few wee things going on in my head, but the most important one and the funny one was it felt like it was my pro debut again. Mm. Because all the kind of nerves and the wee jitters that you get before a fight, I was like, geez, I forgot about all these. You know what I mean? So it was um it was it was great experience again to get back in there and to get all those. Did you love that again. feeling again? Oh yeah. yeah. Like, you know, the, there's nothing better than the feeling of preparing for a fight. You know, you have a goal, you have a mm. vision, you're going to bed early, you're sleeping well, you're eating right, you're doing, you're in a great routine, you know what I mean? And to have that goal of a fight coming up and then obviously the moments before, it's a, it's a great buzz. Like. And it was a new chapter for you because you just moved uh, from LA to Sheffield with the, uh, the training camp, the Ingle camp, the famous uh, trainers, um, after three years in LA. Okay. LA to Sheffield. <laughs> <laughs> Can you explain mad. that, please? It's a bit of a culture <laughs> shift, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> I've been called mad a few times yeah. for this, but, um, you know, look, I'm from Donegal, I'm from Ireland. I'm a proud Irish man and uh, very proud of where I come from. But it's amazing, don't get me wrong, the first year, year and a half, signing with Golden Boy Promotions, living in Marina del Rey, Venice Beach, Santa Monica, the Hollywood, everything like that there, unbelievable. Sounds good so far. It was yeah, a great you're, you're buzz. painting a nice you picture know, here. It, it was a great buzz, it was a great life, but I'm a very determined and driven person and I want to be the best that I can be. And that lifestyle didn't suit it. It didn't suit me, I didn't feel like this was working for me. It was, a too, it was too easy of a lifestyle. Do you know what I mean? I was, I was living a life as if I was already world champion. Right. Okay, so is it party life? Is that what you're referring no, not, to? Not or party life. It was more, it was more um, you know, just a real chilled out, high kind of lifestyle, you yeah. know. I'm not, I grew up in a one bedroom flat with my mother and father, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I'm not used to living in big couple of grand a month apartment, you know, and stuff like that there. It was, it was something that just didn't fit right. Look, everybody knows Boxing is a very mentally challenging sport. Yeah. And you have to live a very mentally, not challenging life, but you need to be very disciplined and you can't get any weaknesses or softness mm. in you. Do you know what I mean? You have to stay positive, you have to stay strong because at the end of the day, there's somebody in there Somebody's trying to take the head of you. You <laughs> yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. And you have to be very strong and inside and mentally. So people will remember you uh, winning a world silver back in 2013, I think. And I remember interviewing you at the time and the big question was, are you going to go for the Olympics now, win Olympic gold? But you went pro and you did the LA thing in the, the, in the Mexican sort of the scene yeah. over there as well. Do you have regrets now about making that choice to go there or what, how do you look back on it now? This question I've been asked loads of times and um, it's something that as a young kid, the reason I got into boxing was because I remember sitting up late, three, four in the morning, watching boxing over in America and things like that there, watching Marco Antonio Barrera won the world title against Prince Nassim Hamid. That was the first time I ever got goosebumps in my life. Mm. And I knew something at a young age that, geez, I like this or whatever, you know. But for me, that was the reason that I got into boxing. And that was the fire burning deep down inside me from a young age. Whenever I started doing really well as an amateur, 
the Olympics became a goal and a dream of mine because it became a possibility. But then it all turned around whenever I was starting to get the contracts and the offers from professional boxing and Oscar De La Hoya and everything like that. It was something that it just clicked. And I was like, this is what I want to do. And uh, don't get me wrong, whenever the Olympics were happening, the hype and everything mm. was coming up, I was like, you know, I wish I had a stuck about maybe to represent my country at the Olympic Games, but I represented my country over a hundred times. You know, I won a world silver medal, European gold, world number one as an amateur. And I was happy in myself that I'd done that and I was moving on to the main goal and the main ambition for me to become world professional champion. And that's what we're working for towards at the moment, ultimately, isn't it? Yeah, that's, you know, that's the reason why I'm doing it. That's the reason why I'm pushing myself and uh, giving myself every opportunity because, you know, I believe and I know that I can become world champion and it's just a matter of me now putting that into work. The, the belt we have beside you is the, the North American we have a look uh, at it? Federation sure belt can. which you won a Am year ago. Am I allowed ago. to touch it? In the, fight, <laughs> in, 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 in the fight in which you broke your hand, you won that yeah. belt. But that's just a stepping stone, isn't it? Are you a man in a hurry now? Do you want to get up there and, and challenge some of the big guns in your division? Of course, you know what I mean? I, I'm a no panic, but that's, that's where I want to get to. I'm 26 years of age, you know, I don't need to rush, I don't need to panic into taking big fights or you know, taking unnecessary steps. That's why I turned professional also three and a half years ago. Because professional boxing and amateur boxing are two different sports. Yeah. You know They're what I mean? They're two different worlds, aren't exactly. they? Exactly. And it just takes time for you to adapt into that. And that's why I did it that bit sooner, yeah. to give myself that chance to to adapt and to gain that experience that I have to gain. Now, you can't uh, do any of this without the support of loved ones and mammies and girlfriends. Yeah. And we're seeing some of them. I think we saw April, your girlfriend, in that's the crowd right, there. Her, yeah. Hugely important for you, aren't they, to have that support and love there? Without a doubt, you know, people can get mixed up and can maybe not understand that boxing's a very individual sport. It's not a team sport where you're traveling with all a bunch of lads and things like that there that they're all going through the same kind of mm. effort as you and the same sacrifices as you. Boxing's a very individual sport and uh, for me, you know, I'm very lucky to have my mother and to have my girlfriend April around me because there's not too many people understand that coming up close to a fight what way I like to be and just, mm -hmm. you know, zone out and just keep on focus there's on mommy. the fight ahead. That's her. And that must have made living mother. in LA, as you said, as glamorous and exciting as it was, all the tougher because you were so far away from those you loved. Yes, and it's just something that I want to touch on because I think it's something that's very important. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a lot of people out there will look, especially young kids growing up, they're going to look at social media. I'm going to post things of me winning fights, me in Santa Monica, LA, Boston, New York, all this here. And it's going to look amazing. And they're going to think, oh, he's living such a great life. But there's days when I was living in LA, posting nice pictures, or whatever. But the next day, I was maybe sitting in my apartment on my own, crying. Mm. Yeah, feeling lonely. Missing, missing family, missing home. And that's a thing that I just want to say. Like, it's not all glamorous. It's not all sunshine and rainbows. It's not all this thing that's painted on social media. I'm not going to post a photo of me sitting crying. Yeah. <laughs> you no. know what I mean? But, but it's very honest uh, and very raw of you to actually say that because everyone's life looks yeah, so glamorous exactly, on social yeah. media. We all put our best foot forward. Of course. But for someone like you, who, you, you know, young men in particular will yeah. look up to and, you know, you're their role model, it is important to say that you have down days as well and, you know, that's, that's okay. The, but we're human. Yeah. Uh, that's yeah. the best thing about it, you know. That's our excuse. <laughs> We're human. We're not perfect. We're not meant to run about with a smile on our face every day. Yeah. We're running right out of time, Jason. Two things have to ask you. First of all, what do you make of Mr. McGregor going on the rampage in New York <laughs> with his entourage? Yeah, you know, exactly what, um, what I'm after saying. You know, the amount of young children and the amount of people that's looking up to that man, whatever he touches, whatever he wears, whatever he smells like, young kids want to be that. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? And I think it's a disgrace to be honest, what he is doing right now because there's kids going to be looking at that thinking that this is cool now, you know, yeah. Yeah. this is the way to act. Like, everybody loves him because young kids look at social media as a popularity thing about a cool kind of thing and McGregor's getting all this spotlight but for the wrong reasons right now. What the man has done for the sport of MMA and for our country has been amazing. He put us on the map unbelievably. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And has set such a high mm. bar. 
But, you know, I think he's let himself down big time this time. Great stuff, Jason. We hope to see you back in the ring soon within Thank the next you. few months. Yeah, definitely. You yeah. know, making a few phone calls right at the minute, talking with my team, and uh, next few days we'll know. Come back with the world title belt to us, will you? Not a problem. This is another lovely. Thanks another, for, another for passing this on. <laughs> really like it. I think it suits me. It does. Too <laughs> far, yeah. Brilliant Thanks, stuff, Jason. Jason. Thanks, Look after yourself. Appreciate it.